Welcome to the Introduction to Junos series. This is the module on the Junos user interface. The Junos user interface has three basic parameters that we're going to discuss in this module. The first is the way to connect to the interface, uh, and there are several methods for that. The second is the modes that you're in when you're in the user interface and what you can do in each of those modes. And the third is the types of configurations that we have on the Junos device and how we access and manipulate those. So starting with the connection methods, uh, we have two basic connection types um, and, and multiple methods to get at them in the Junos operating system. The first connection method is the CLI or command line interface. This is the bread and butter interface for most network engineers. This is a text-based interface where you get to a command prompt and you enter commands on a network device. There are three ways to get to the command line interface on a Junos device. The first is the console. The console method is a serial connection that's physically on the Junos device. The console connection uses a fairly standard setting for network devices. That's 9600 baud. 8, none, and 1, 8 bits, no parity, 1 stop bit. This is uh, very common across all network gear. So in order to access the console port, you have to have some physical access to the Junos device. And you plug into this console port, you plug it into your computer, and make the connection. There are devices called console servers that can be installed in racks in order to make the serial connection to the device between the console server and the device and then we can access the console server across an IP-based network. But it's important to note that the console port itself on a Junos device is a serial connection on a physical port. The second way to access the command line interface is via SSH. This is an encrypted, secure connection across an IP network. So you need an SSH client on the computer that you're coming from, you enter the IP address of the Junos device, and you connect to it across an IP network. The important thing to note about this is it has to be configured of the device and enabled for SSH to work. The third method is using Telnet. Uh, Telnet is very similar to SSH in that it's an IP-based connection method over an IP network. It also needs to be configured on the Junos device for it to work. The major difference is that Telnet is an older protocol that does not support encryption. So when you log in on a Telnet connection, your username and your password are passed in clear text across the network segments that you are logging in from. So obviously this is little used in production networks today, uh, and if it's used at all, it should be in segregated, secured, separate networks. The second uh, connection method to manage a Junos device is the GUI, or the Graphical User Interface, also referred to as JWeb, uh, Junos Web. The JWeb uh, provides most of the functions on a Junos device in a web interface. The web interface can be connected via port 80 HTTP, or it can be connected to via SSL on port 443. As with SSH and Telnet, the access on these ports has to be enabled and configured on the Junos device. For the SSL, you can generate a self-signed certificate um, or load a known certificate from your own certificate authorities. The major difference between web and SSL is again encryption. Uh, web connections will again pass your username and password as clear text across the IP network that you're connecting on. So again, this is something we would not want to do on most networks. Modes is our next section on the Junos user interface. So uh, once we connect to a Junos device, we're in certain modes on the device. Operational mode is the default. Uh, most users, when they connect, will end up in operational mode. This is usually indicated by your username followed by the caret sign on the interface. From this, we can run show commands, uh, we can check status of the device, and we have certain troubleshooting type commands that uh, gain information from the device in operational mode. 
Uh, we can enter the configure mode, which is the next one, by typing configure uh, on the operational prompt. You can also type the word edit and you will enter configuration mode. Configuration mode is indicated by the pound or the hash sign after your username that you've logged into. And it also indicates between the brackets where in the hierarchy you are sitting in the Junos configuration. Um, edit is by itself means you're at the top of the configuration, which is where you will end up by default when you first enter configuration mode. So these are the two modes you're in. Obviously in configuration mode you can make configuration changes. Uh, while you're in configuration mode you can run operational commands. You do this simply by appending the word run to the front of that operational command. There are two special parameters we can use when we enter configuration mode. The first is private. Uh, normally when we enter configuration mode, everybody who enters configuration mode on the same device is changing the same configuration. With configure private, we make a copy of the complete configuration and then all our changes are only in that copy, not in the copy that everybody else is sharing. So that's configure private. Other people can still edit the configuration, but w their changes will not be in our copy of the configuration. The second parameter we can use in configuration mode is exclusive. If we enter configure exclusive at the command prompt, the next person who tries to enter configuration mode will get a message that they cannot do so because it's being exclusively edited by the other user. So exclusive is used in situations where you need to lock everybody else out while you're making changes so that they don't affect uh, anything on the device uh, until your changes are complete. The third mode that we have on a Junos device is in root. With the root mode, we see the prompt of the at symbol followed by the percentage sign. This is the operating system prompt. When we are at the root mode, we are in the BSD operating system. So if we're logged in as a normal user on a Junos device, we would enter root in order to get to the root mode and we have to um, enter a password that allows us access to that. If we log in as the root user, which is the root user of the BSD kernel of the Junos device, this is the prompt we will go to first, the root prompt. From the root prompt we would enter CLI at any time to return to the Junos command line interface on the device. The Junos configurations are in a hierarchical structure. So uh, what that means is that they're organized into configuration sections. So here's an example section uh, under system section syslog. So we have two um, subsections here. Uh, and within the syslog subsection, we see there are further subsections um, for the archive, for the file messages, and for the file interactive commands. So we have a hierarchical structure of section, subsection, subsection until we reach a final configuration item called a leaf object. You can see the leaf objects in the configuration are followed by the semicolon. So that's a final parameter in a Junos configuration, the leaf object. This is a XML style structure. It makes the configurations then easier to read and it makes it easier to hone in on particular parts of the configuration um, when you're troubleshooting and trying to see what a configuration is along with the behavior of the device. There are several configuration types in um, the Junos operating system. The first is the active configuration. The active configuration is what's loaded and running on the device as we speak, and that's what's actually running. When we enter configuration mode, we create what's called a candidate configuration. A candidate configuration is, starts with a full copy of the active configuration. And now all the changes we make in configuration mode are made on the copy. So it's important to note that nothing is changing on the Junos device as you change the configuration. 
all the configuration changes are made on the copy and they will not affect the Junos device until they are committed to the device and become the active configuration. The other handy item then that Junos has is what we call rollback configurations. Every time we make a commit to change a configuration on a Junos device, it makes an automatic backup copy of the previous configurations and saves these. By default, there are 49 backup copies of a configuration, and then zero is the active configuration. So if we type the rollback command, which we'll see in some later lessons, uh, rollback zero is your active configuration, rollback one is the immediate previous, etc. So they get saved uh, up to 50 copies of a configuration, the active configuration, and 49 backup copies. Now, there might be less backup copies than 49 on a space-constrained device. So a very small Junos device, like a Branch SRX firewall that has limited storage capacity, you may not want to, re to store 50 full copies on there because it would consume all the available storage on the device. So you can configure the number of available backup copies by using the max configurations on flash and the max rollback uh, commands. These are typically used on small devices that have small flash memory on them. So that brings us to our summary of our three parts of the Junos user interface. We have our connection methods, which we can use the CLI or the GUI, the JWeb, or the command line interface for text connections. We have our configuration modes, which are the operational mode for seeing what's happening on the device and observing the configuration and show commands. We have the configuration mode, where we can make changes to the configuration uh, of the device. And we have the root prompt, where we can access the underlying operating system of the Junos device. And we have our configuration types. Uh, Junos maintains up to 50 copies of a configuration, uh, zero being the active one and 49 rollback configurations. And we also have the candidate configuration, which is the active copy of the configuration that we have, the copy of the active configuration that we have that we're making our changes to. So these are the ways we can interact with Junos user interface and make changes and monitor what's going on on a Junos device.